Tigers and Tooks! Hello and welcome to my channel. Uh, in this video I'm going to be doing the Brooklyn Nine-Nine tag. This is a version of the tag that was created by Grace Dion. Uh, so in honor of this, I am wearing the Tigers and Toucans outfit, which will make sense as long as you've seen the most recent season of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, uh, up to the point where it's out. This is relevant, but I don't want to spoil anything, so I won't say why, uh, but I realized not everyone had seen it, so I would explain it. And this legitimately, uh, my wife and I were watching uh, when the Tigers and Toucans uh, sweatsuit <laughs> was on, and uh, she joked she was going to get me one, and then I actually found it online, so it was pretty funny. Uh, I was pretty pumped to do this video already, and this made it even better. Let's get into the tag, though. So this is all different Brooklyn Nine-Nine characters, and then you pick a book uh, that's kind of based on a theme of that character. So the first one is Jake Peralta, so a book or series with amazing humor. So when I think uh, amazing humor, I usually think Terry Pratchett. Uh, so I could have picked any Discworld novel, but I specifically decided I would go with Good Omens, which is a book he did with Neil Gaiman. And this book is just so funny. Uh, there's the whole thing, I just laughed. It's, it's a really good combination of Pratchett's humor and Gaiman uh, with writing it out into more of a story format. And so I enjoyed it so much. It's one of those books that I've heard very few people who uh, weren't huge fans, but normally it's just a book I'd recommend to just about anyone because it is a whole lot of fun. Uh, lots of great humor in there. Number two is Amy Santiago, a book or series with amazing female characters. So definitely there were a lot of options I could have picked here. Uh, one of those options specifically that I was going to pick for this, but then picked it uh, for a different prompt, so I couldn't. So I decided to go with Shadow of the Gods by John Gwent. Very specifically, because we follow a few different uh, POVs here, but Orca specifically was my favorite, who was absolutely just a badass female character. Uh, a different POV uh, with her being a mother and kind of about her going on, basically her quest to try to find her son. And uh, there's a lot of other stuff that's revealed about her, but was a really fantastic character in a book that I quite enjoyed. So I thought that would be a good option for this one. Uh, number three is Rosa Diaz, and it's a book or series with a great mystery. So I don't really read like actual like mystery thriller books a whole lot, uh, but there's definitely plenty of fantasy books or books that I've read that have like an element where there is a mystery. The one that came to mind, because it's one I read more recently, was Blackstone Heart by Michael R. Fletcher. This book uh, starts with literally with the character not really knowing who he is or having any of his memories, and throughout he finds more and more of those memories, but still the mystery of who he is and what happened to him is one of the prevailing themes uh, thematically as we go through the book, and as we get more and more, it just was so interesting, and uh, the kind of like partial reveal at the end uh, it tells us there's still a lot more we don't know, even though you think you're starting to get the hang of what's happening, uh, was just a fantastic way to end it. So I thought that worked out well for this prompt. Uh, number four is for Terry Jeffords, uh, one of my favorite characters, a book or series that turned out differently from what you expected. So from Grace's video, this is because, you know, Terry Jeffords and or Terry Crews, the actor who plays him, like the big strong man who's actually a big softy, so a book that kind of ended up being a little bit uh, different than what you expected. And uh, the one that really came to mind for me, which is why I didn't pick it for an earlier prompt, was The Sword of Kaigen. Because I really, I'd heard a lot of really good things about this, but most of it had been kind of general, or was about the magic system, or like that it was sad. But I really didn't have any clue uh, what the setting was. And so that was a really big surprise. And very early on, realizing that it was closer to a modern setting and just kind of a backwater area, really, really was not expected and was completely different than what I thought. And some of the stuff later where like the ending just completely was not what I would have been expecting. So I thought that worked out pretty well uh, as just being different. Uh, and a lot of that too, I was I was fine with. There are some things that would have changed, but about sort of kind, not about Terry Crews. Terry Crews is an angel. Uh, <laughs> So moving on to number five. Number five is Gina Linetti, a book or series you loved that was outside of your comfort zone. 
Uh, and so this one I think she picked because Gina's like the popular one, but uh, she didn't really like Gina. I never really cared for Gina either. I thought she was a really good character, but the character just kind of annoyed me. So I definitely get it. But uh, I am trying to, to read more things that are specifically outside of like my normal comfort zone, uh, doing some more sci-fi, which I, I like sub-sci-fi. I just haven't read a ton of it. Some other stuff in general, but I still stick mostly to fantasy. So the big one that jumped out that was very different was Jurassic Park. Not only is this uh, science fiction, but it's, uh, with Crichton in general, it, he has a very unique writing style uh, that was really like nothing else I had ever read. So this was definitely a very, very different book for me, but it was one that I really, really enjoyed, and I'm really interested to read more uh, Crichton's work, too, uh, because of the fact that I enjoyed this so much. And I have the, the beautiful Barnes & Noble one, finally, which also helps, because I love it. So that's what I went with for that one. Uh, number six, Charles Boyle, uh, who, another one with, I mean, man, all the casting on Brooklyn Nine-Nine is just perfect. And, like, Boyle is a character who often, like, annoys me and, like, will make you cringe, but is just played so perfectly. Uh, but this is a book or series with immersive descriptions, food or otherwise, and kind of referencing that he often will uh, describe food and, like, as a food blog, and is really specific about a lot of things. Usually describes things in a very poor manner uh, overall uh, without realizing the double entendres. Uh, but so it's, uh, it's always fun there. But so with really uh, immersive descriptions, once again, there's a lot of books I could have picked for that because I really enjoy books like that. But uh, a series that I'm reading right now is Realm of the Elderlings by Robin Hobb. I grabbed Assassin's Quest. I'm actually uh, uh, two out of three books done in the Tony Man trilogy, so a good deal past this. But uh, in general, uh, Robin Hobb's descriptions and just the way she writes absolutely just draws me in in a fantastic way. Uh, so probably uh, just a little bit better than Boyle, just a bit, you know, because it's Robin Hobb. So I, I really, really love the way that she describes things in her prose, the way she writes. So it, it's pretty great. You know, of course, there's The Wheel of Time, which is infamous for its immersive descriptions. But uh, I, I tend to like that kind of thing, really feeling like you're in the world. So still something that I enjoy. And then we have Captain Holt, who also just such a great character. The more like you find out about him and see his humor and the way they use his character is just amazing. Uh, but so that is a Booker series that subverts classic tropes, uh, with him just being a pretty different character than what you would expect, especially from the Captain, uh, which it works out fantastically for the show. And so I just realized that I actually do have two John Gwyns in here because I picked Faithful and the Fallen. And so I grabbed Wrath, which is the last book. And Malice starts uh, with a lot of tropes. And that was actually one of my big complaints, is it's felt very, very tropey. Uh, but then it takes all of them and kind of turns them around and does some very, very different things, especially in Ruin and Wrath. There's a whole lot that you find out that's very different. And so I really enjoyed the, the change from the tropes. It still feels like such a classic fantasy story. You could give me this and tell me it's from the 80s and I would believe you because it just feels like that classic sword and sorcery fantasy, yet it does a lot to subvert the tropes while still not taking away from that classic feel, and I really love that. A lot of times books that are all about subverting tropes will kind of take it a little further or won't still have that feel of the original story, so I really love what he did with this series. All right, next up is Hitchcock and Scully, and that's a Booker series that made you want to sit in one place until you finished it, which I thought was such a clever prompt. Uh, for those two, very infamously on the show, they're trying to always do as little as possible, move as little as possible. Uh, so that was a fun prompt for a book. Now, I read a lot of really long books, as you can probably tell, and with pretty much everything that I've used so far. So very often, I do not finish books in one sitting. Uh, the very few that I have are usually shorter ones. I just thought of a third one, because I did Eric by Terry Pratchett in one sitting. But the, the two that came up uh, that specifically, uh, Eric was just, it was so quick, I just kind of sat there. But the two that really made me want to uh, were Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman, which I did finish in uh, one sitting because I just couldn't put it down, and The Willful Princess and the Pinebald Prince uh, by Robin Hobb, which is kind of, it's, it's a related story, uh, more of a novella, which this is absolutely a novella, even if it's not called that. Uh, as well. So these were both shorter. I didn't finish this quite. I read most of it one night, but I started it really late, not realizing there were like no chapter breaks or anything like that. And so I didn't end up having time to finish it, uh, but I really, really wanted to. 
and I finished it very quickly the next day. So these two definitely were ones that made me want to just sit and finish them. Uh, and then number nine is Peraltiago, uh, which of course the combination of Jake Peralta and Amy, Amy Santiago, if I can talk, uh, with their relationship, which I agree, Grace commented, the show's been on for a long time, and even at the beginning it was pretty heavily hinted that that was eventually going to happen, so I don't think it's a spoiler, it's fine. If you're watching a Brooklyn Nine-Nine tag, you're probably a fan of the show. Uh, but this one is a, a Booker series with an amazing romance. I'm really not a fan of romance for the most part. I don't mind it uh, to an extent, as long as it's not the focus, but it's definitely not something that I'm a big on. So on this one, I just tried to think of a book that actually has a romance element that I actually enjoyed. I went with the, the Stormlight Archive, because Brandon Sanderson does like to include romantic elements in his books, uh, but they're never the focus, and I, I uh, specifically here uh, with Shalon, I like the way that her romance is done in this book and uh, in uh, Rhythm of War as well, or, or where I think you get kind of most of it, uh, but there's just a lot that's done. I think it does start, does it start in Words of Radiance? It kind of starts in Words of Radiance, but I like the way it's done. It's also one of like the only uses of a love triangle that wasn't annoying to me. I thought the way that that was done uh, also worked really well and ended up developing all of the characters involved in really great ways. So that's what I went with because he's an author, I think, that just doesn't overdo it. And that's something I really appreciate with romance. Oh, we had a book book avalanche uh, for my stack. So that's the sign that we need to wrap up. And in reality, we're at the end of it as well. Number 10 is to tag people. And uh, I'm not actually going to tag anybody on this one just because it is very specific to Brooklyn Nine-Nine. So if you're not a fan of the show and I tag you, you could still do it, but it wouldn't be nearly as fun. And this is a tag that's just really fun to, to think about and to do, I think. Uh, so I'm not going to tag anyone. But if you're watching this uh, and you are a fan of Brooklyn Nine-Nine and you do content, or if you don't do content too, uh, you can check out, post it in the Discord too. We have a tag channel where you can just post text versions. Definitely do this one. It was a whole lot of fun. Uh, make sure to check out, of course, Grace's original video for this as well, which is linked in the description. Uh, that was one was a lot of fun as well. But those are my picks, and that is the Brooklyn Nine-Nine tag. Make sure to give it a like if you enjoyed it. Check the link in the description, like I said, both for Grace's video link and for the Wizardly Duo Discord. Like I said, we have the tag channel, which is a lot of fun, so that everybody can get in on the tags, even if you're not a content creator. Uh, so that's a great place to check out. And of course, if you'd like to see more of my content, make sure to subscribe.